Okay, just a quick little video to talk about how to convert seconds into something that looks more like a digital clock. So we've got an integer, let's say, called seconds, and we have some number inside of there. This is going to be the number of total seconds. Very often we'll work with seconds or milliseconds because it's a small unit, it's an integer, we can increment it, it's easy to work with numbers, you can add, subtract from them. But then when you display it, if you're building something like a music player or a video player, we don't want to leave it as just seconds displayed. We want to display it like a clock, like a digital clock. So hours, minutes, and seconds. So how do I convert something like this into a display like this? How do I deal with the fact that I could have second values that are just three? So I've got three seconds, but I don't want to display it like that. I want to display it as 03, and I don't want to display it as 63 seconds. I want to say it's a minute and three seconds. So how do we do the conversion? Well, I'm just to show the, the incrementing, I've got a set interval that's going to fire once a second and call this function. This function is going to start by incrementing our integer, so the seconds will continue to count up. So how do we turn that into the string? Well, pretty simply, actually. We have the math.floor method. This rounds down to the closest integer, so basically it strips off any decimal value. If I've got 1.3, it's going to give me 1. If I've got 1.9, it's going to give me 1. It just basically removes any decimal values. So we take our seconds, divide that by 3600, because that's the number of seconds in an hour. 60 seconds per minute, 60 minutes, 60 times 60, 3600. This will give me the number of hours. If it's less than 3600, it's going to be 0. Over 3600, it's going to be at least 1. For the minutes, we take the number of seconds, we divide that by 60. That's going to give us the number of minutes, but it's going to give us the number of minutes in the total time, not just in what's left over after we have the hours. So we have to make sure that we subtract the number of hours that we just calculated times 60. So that's the number of minutes. So subtract the number of minutes that we got here in this calculation, and then divide what's left over by 60. That's going to give us the right number of minutes within the current hour. For seconds, we can just use the modulus operator. The modulus is going to divide a number by, in this case, 60, and it's going to tell us the remainder. We don't have to worry about subtracting or adding anything to this value, though, because with the modulus, with the remainder, it can't be bigger than 59. Think about it. If you take any number, divided by 60. The biggest remainder you can get is 59. Once I get 60 as a remainder, okay, well now it's evenly divisible by one number larger. There's not going to be any remainder if it's evenly divisible by 60. So, just take the seconds and do the modulus 60. That's going to give us three integers. Now we could be stuck with something where it's 1, 1, and 1. I don't want to display it as 1 colon 1 colon 1. I want to have 0 1 and 0 1. So we're going to convert it. We're going to use the pad start. Take our integer, convert it to a string, and then call pad start. We want to have two characters as our minimum, and 0 is the character we're going to use to pad it. We do the same thing for the minutes and the seconds. Now, I've got it here padded for the hours as well. We don't technically have to do that. I could leave this off and just say it's just going to show as hours, but just to be consistent, so it's three sets of two digits, I'm going to leave it like that. All right, so let's open up our console, and we're going to run time.js, and uh, I better save that just in case. We'll open this up a little wider. There we go. Oh, I'm in the wrong folder. <laughs> That's what I did. All right, so let's jump into the proper folder. I'll clear the screen here. There we go. And run this again. And there we have it. We got to one minute, jumped up. And it's going to keep going like that until I do Control-C to stop this thing running. It will continue to jump up. We could jump ahead here, go up to 118 seconds, so just under two minutes. And we 
have to save that change, of course. There we go, we see it jumps to two minutes. All right, and 3600 would be one hour. So let's go just a little bit under that. We'll say 3595, save that and run that one. So 59 minutes, and when we get to one hour, there we go. And then it starts incrementing the seconds and goes from there. So that's it. That is all that's required to do this just those three lines of code that gives you the three values which you can then use pad start to pad them appropriately and just concatenate them with the colon signs in between all right so if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments down below i will leave a link to this code as a code gist link inside the description and as always thanks for watching